Yep, all went wrong. As you can see, it's a different motherboard. The RAM is in the wrong place. Welcome back to the channel everyone, in today's video we're going to be doing another build. No ordinary build however, this one's all from last generation parts. I figured I had a few knocking around so all I had to do was top up with a few more and we could see what we can get as a last generation beast. Now this thing did come in at just over a thousand pound but I'll go over the costing later on in the video. Now let's go over what we've got. Right off the bat we'll be sitting it all in the uh, ASRock Extreme 4 Z370 motherboard. This thing's quite good, it's sort of low to mid range to be fair. It wasn't very expensive and I picked it up, I can't remember the cost but it wasn't that much. Much, to be fair. Um, for the processor, we'll be using the Core i7 8700K. That's hardly a slouch. Even in today's standards, it's still pretty good. Uh, to keep that processor cold, we'll be using this. I believe it's called the Master Liquid ML240 from Cooler Master. Now, I know this is an old iteration. There's been many new iterations of this since, and it sells brand new for about £65, uh, which is not bad at all. We've got Corsair Vengeance LPX RAM. Now, it's DDI4. Obviously, I can't use DDR3, so it's as close to last gen as I could possibly get. It's running at 3000 Hz. It seems 3600 is the new standard nowadays. Um, as a power supply, we've got this, the Corsair RM750. I don't know what generation this is, and to be fair, Corsair power supplies are all very similar. However, this one did come with a 10-year guarantee, so I figured, why not? You should never, ever scrimp on your power supply, guys. In terms of the graphics, uh, we've got this. Uh, I did a video of this previously, uh, I'm sure you can find it up there. It's the MSI GTX 1070 Armour. It's quite good. I got it on Amazon Renewed at £270, so it's not a brand new part, but it is very, very good. Um, for the case, we've got this beast. I think it's called a Kronig. It costs £35. And I just went with it. And listen, actual tempered glass, that's got to account for at least £20 of the cost of this entire thing. I'm not overly looking forward to building in it, but 35 quid. why the hell not? It even came with two of these horrible looking fans and they're extremely loud. I tried them out earlier, so I'm not going to be using these in the build. Uh, the reason the build came in over £1,000 is because I went for these. The Pure Wings 2. Uh, now these are last generation Pure Wings, there are, there are Pure Wings 3 now and they're still £7 a bank, so 21 quid just for the fans, but given this thing it might look pretty, but it will definitely be a bit of a hotbox, which is why I went for the radiator and some decent fans. But anywho, uh, for the storage and boot drive. Storage, however, I'll just be using a WD Blue, to be fair. But for the boot drive, we've got this. It's an M.2 WD Green, 240 gig. It's not NVMe, so by definition, I'm calling that last gen. So, not like a clickbait thumbnail or title, to be fair. It did come in at just over a thousand pounds and it is all last generation stuff. So I'm very looking, very much looking forward to this. Uh, so uh, yeah, let's, let's give it a go.
So here we are everyone. Isn't it beautiful? I'm sure the eagle-eyed among you have noticed the build probably didn't go quite as good as it looked on the montage that we've just seen. <laughs> yep, all went wrong. As you can see, it's a different motherboard. The RAM is in the wrong place. The video card in the wrong place. I'll, I'll get on to why. So in terms of troubleshooting, seven hours-ish is what I spent on this. It was an absolute debacle. Everything went fine, it was very smooth putting it together, the case was actually quite easy to build in, that was one of my fears. However, it wouldn't post. I, I tried everything. I changed the dims over to completely different ones, I swapped out the power supply, that was fun. Even, I even tried moving around the storage, just, even though that never really helps, I tried it. I tried everything, and nothing would work. I put a new motherboard in, a Gigabyte motherboard, managed to get it to at least post with one RAM stick in just the one no video card and at that point i thought oh maybe i've solved it maybe this specific ram is the way to go so i took that motherboard out put the other one back in which <laughs> is effectively another build in itself managed to get that sorted got it in it wouldn't post so i had to take out the asrock board again put the gigabyte one back in again i, d I don't want to go into just how displeasing this was managed to get it running with a RAM stick. The video card had to go into the ATX slot because it's not working for whatever reason <laughs> in the in the 16X, which tells me that this is definitely something to do with the I/O controller on the processor itself. That I, I fail even to comprehend that two of my motherboards would be completely broken because they're not. I know they run fine. I've actually tested the ASRock one off camera and that's working just fine with a with another processor, so it's definitely come down to that. So, I've had to settle with all sorts. Oh, by the way, the M.2 drives, only one of them works as well. That was definitely an indicator that it was the I.O. controller of the processor. So, this is where we're at. We can run with two RAM sticks, only two, in single channel, which is why they're side by side. But I suppose having 16 is still better than 8. I'd rather have a 16 stick, but I don't have one to hand. But either way, that's what we're going with. I've Settled again on the video card being in the ATX slot, but to be honest at 1080p I'm not sure the additional bandwidth of the 16x would make a great deal of difference as you can see Formula one is running remarkably well anyway. We're averaging around 104 frames, so that's very very good news, but yeah, this is pretty much how it's ended up so Still not massively expensive to be fair when all all things considered and the motherboard does work It would it would still in principle this works. I haven't tried to overclock. I thought I would just leave that be but it is running remarkably well. I have tested Tomb Raider also, and that seems to be pretty good. So let's get on to the price. Let's let's see what this thing actually came out at. So first things first, I suppose, the case. The Kronig, £35 with actual tempered glass and a couple of fans. We didn't use them. Uh, they're, they're shockingly bad. Shockingly bad. So yeah, 35 quid from the start. Then we've got the cooler, which was £65, which is a master liquid, ML240 from uh, Cooler Master, which is it's quite nice, actually. We ended up buying additional fans, as I said, we didn't use the ones that came with the case, so we bought three Pure Wings 2, which are very, very good. We've got one of the exhaust, and on the cooler itself, we've gone push-pull. Uh, they are quite good for static pressure, so I've whacked them at the front, so I just I, I could have the light shining in, making it all very pretty, and whatnot. The graphics card is a steal, like I said in a previous video, 270 quid. Fantastic for a GTX 1070 from MSI, it's the armor version, you can overclock it, but... As I've discussed about the troubleshooting, I'm not inclined to do that whatsoever. Uh, the motherboard, which we're not using in here, but does work perfectly fine, is the ASRock Extreme 4 Z370. That was about 120 quid, so happy days with that. The processor, an 8700K. As I said, I think this one's not working too well, and that's caused all of the problems. But you can pick them up for around 250 quid. I can't attest to whether or not they're good. They could be well, they could be very, very damaged, put it that way. So take matters into your own hands with that. For the storage, we've got a 35 quid WD Blue, just a mechanical drive, just to put a few games on, and that was 35 pounds. And again, at 30 quid, we've got a WD Green M.2 SATA, not NVMe, and that's 240 gig. We're using that as a boot drive and for faster loading games. And it's working remarkably well, to be fair. I, I'm very, very happy with it. Overall, the machine is very good, especially running this power supply, the Corsair RM750, that was 75 pounds. That's an absolute bargain, 10 year warranty and 80 plus gold. I, I'm very, very pleased with that. All of this is, is quite good. It comes in at about a thousand pound, which I think is absolutely epic. The frames it's kicking out are very, very good. It's only about four or five short of what was on the actual prosumer beast 
machine that I made with a 3950X and a 2080. I'm sure the video will be popping up here somewhere. But yeah, a thousand pounds. I'm very, very happy with it. The benchmarks are coming out pretty good. Again, I, I say this every time, Tomb Raider is not really a solid benchmark. It's just a benchmark for its own game, but it's good for me to test from machine to machine. And this is coming out quite well. I think it's around 85 FPS, something along those lines. Like with the F1 previously on, I've seen that down at 95, but I've also seen it at 107. So I'm very, very pleased with that. I think the unit itself, if you wanted to play in 1080p, is a very, very solid build. I'd definitely go for it. I am concerned with the case being a bit of a hotbox. I have mentioned that a few times, but we'll have to wait and see. That's why I've gone push-pull, but I have nothing on the top. I've left that just so air can naturally convect out. I do have an exhaust, so it will pull air across it, though, and try and get some air over the VRM, which on this board is probably not that important, but if it was on the Extreme 4, it definitely would have been. It's only eight phase. But yeah, I'm very, very pleased with this, everyone. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's all gone a bit poor and the machine looks shocking with everything in the wrong place, but that's PC building, I suppose, and it's very, very usable. So it's going to be a gaming machine, probably a HTPC. I'm sure everything about that will run perfectly well for me. So happy days. But thank you very much for watching, everyone. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a nice evening.